The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. We're already at the end of April, and that means the NFL Draft is tomorrow. We are super excited about the NFL Draft, so today we're going to do a mock draft um, of the whole first round. Malik's going to get the even picks. I get the odd picks, so I get the number one overall pick. I control the Lions' future. Yes. How does does that make you feel? Uh... (laughs) I think it's better you, than you me. You trust my instincts, don't it's, you? It's probably better than me controlling their future because <laughs> I don't I don't know. I think you I have would have took a swing. Good intentions, but you never know what I could do. Yeah. Um so I'm more intrigued to see what you'll do with it. Um and you also own the Jets picks, which is funny. Um former co host Chris really enjoys the Jets. Yeah. Don't know why still, but you know, <laughs> that's there. So real quick though, we do need to update on the NBA playoffs. We'll do a much deeper dive next week after we do kind of a draft recap. Um, but the NBA playoffs, I think, have been really fun, uh, really exciting for the most part. A um, couple series are over. The Heat beat the Hawks 4-1 to one, uh, pretty handily. Hawks just looked out of rhythm, I guess. Yeah, Trey, Trey had a really bad series. Yeah. And, and on and the I, other side, Jimmy Butler balled out. Yeah, I was going to say Jimmy Butler played crazy. Um, and then... We might have to do another Ben Simmons podcast, but uh, he sat out game four after thinking that he was going to play game four. Brooklyn and, overall, we could do a yeah, whole podcast on true. what is going on with Brooklyn. KD and Kyrie got swept by the Celtics. Are the Celtics title contenders? Absolutely. Um, the Pelicans and Suns has been a fun series since Booker got hurt. The Suns are leading three to two. The Wolves and Grizzlies has also been a fun series like we thought. The Grizzlies are leading that 3-2 to two, uh, off of back-to-back comeback wins against the Timberwolves. John Morant might have had one of the greatest dunks in playoff history. He, yeah. What he did to Malik Beasley was not – It was unfortunate. It wasn't okay. No. It was okay for us. Yeah. It wasn't okay for them. <laughs> the Warriors are taking care of business against the Nuggets. They have a chance to close out the series tonight. And – um. Raptors and Sixers has actually been pretty good. It, Listen, it looked bad for the Raptors at first, and now it's starting to look bad for the Sixers. If the Sixers don't close this series out in six, if it, this goes to seven. Yeah, we have a game seven, this, James Harden. This this ain't good. This is not good. No. Once again, good for us because it's hilarious yeah. if Doc Rivers goes this far with blowing a series. Yeah. But, yeah, it's sad seeing where James Harden is right now. Mm-hmm. Um. The Jazz and Mavericks has been a weird series, uh, but the Mavericks are kind of pulling that one out. Um, Luca's back, and the Mavericks just they just look much better than the Jazz. The Jazz might the Jazz might be in that scenario where they're gonna have to blow it up, and yeah. that's that's scary. Um, which series am I missing? The Bucks and the Bulls. Oh yeah, that's why the Grayson Allen attack came to Chicago last Sunday. Yeah, and just lit them up. mm Hmm. And Chicago's just looked not so great. Uh, it's DeRozan or bust lately. And now for tonight's game, Zach Levine has entered health and safety protocols. But he's not going to be there. So on to the next round for and, Milwaukee. And it's looking like curtains yeah. for the Bulls, unfortunately. After such a solid season, at least the beginning of their season, kind of faded away quickly. Um, Yeah, I think that's it, right? Nothing else? Okay. We probably missed something, but we'll yeah, get to we'll, all of it next yeah, week. Yeah, we'll get a deeper dive. This is an it. important day. Yeah, th- this is a fun one. Um, the NFL draft is tomorrow, like I said, 8 o'clock uh, tomorrow night. And the Lions, once again, they're right at the top. They got that number two pick. Malik's going to pick for them today. Like I said, we're going to go. I'm going to take all the odd picks, one, three, five, and so on. Malik's going to take all the evens, which is kind of the more fun teams, at least for our fan bases. Um, so I'm really confused at what I'm going to do for the other picks, but I have, have my little sheet. 
didn't fill anything out because I don't want Malik to have to – like, Malik might take one of my picks and I got to change it just like a real draft. Exactly. Um, I don't think we decided whether or not we're going to do exactly how we think a team would do it or if we were the GM of a team. I'll probably do a mix of both where if I feel like I know what this team needs – I'll pick that guy. Exactly. That's I, exactly how I feel. If I, feel I don't, go. Yeah. I'll just kind of go with the consensus of what people are looking at. Um, so I would say without further ado, because and we have some extra time, so these first couple picks we can add um, a little bit of reasoning behind it, and as it goes along, we'll go a little yes. bit faster. The Jacksonville Jaguars have the first pick in the draft. Yes, they're on and the And they clock. are on the clock. They're on the clock. Listen, Shot Khan, a mysterious man. <laughs> That has made some sketchy decisions. Yeah. Him and the GM are fighting. Got a new head coach in there. Yeah. And uh, and a lot of the the talk now has been that Trayvon Walker is number one to the Jaguars. Let's 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 give a few thoughts on Trayvon Walker. I, I've saved my thoughts after doing my research. What do you think, first of all, on Trayvon? I don't know. Like I haven't honestly as much as he's been talked about at the top. I haven't done as much research behind him because I am I am so much on the Kayvon Thibodeau boat that I've been debating for the Jaguars, do I pick him number one? Even though that's it doesn't look like that's going to happen for the real thing, but do I want to throw that wrench in our system already? I don't know. I don't necessarily think that, think that that's what I want to do just because of that reason. Um, I'd rather see where he falls in the draft because it doesn't look like he's going to be number one. Um, so Trayvon Walker, right now, I I, I think I put him against a, above Aiden Hutchinson. Um, And let's just get this out of the way. I'm going to take Trayvon Walker number one. I'm going to go wow. with, with what that consensus is. You're going been. with the hype. Yes. You're going with the hype. And and this, I'm going to do that only because it goes into my reasoning of, I feel like, Aiden Hutchinson is the safe bet at the top of this draft. I agree. I think you know what you're going to get from him, but I don't know exactly what that ceiling looks like. Trayvon Walker, Kayvon Thibodeau, to me, have higher ceilings. And if I'm Jacksonville, I want to take a risk because I need a game changer. I'm in the bottom of the barrel right now. Getting a safe pick, which is what the Lions normally do, is just not for me. I need swing for the fences, go for the talent kind of pick. I I can't like I like Aiden Hutchinson. I would not be sad if I drafted him as my if on any team. But at the very top of the draft, I feel like he's just too safe to go for. Like what is Jacksonville getting out of going safe? Nothing. They don't get anything. They're not improving their team enough. They need to start making leaps and bounds to their team. And to me, he doesn't do that. I'm going with Trayvon Walker, number one. I'm believing in this hype that he has. Um, if it was realistically, if it was me, I would go Kayvon Thibodeau. But I'm going to go to not throw our draft off crazy from the get-go. I'm going to go Trayvon Walker. So, after doing the research mm -hmm. on Trayvon Walker – Watching some scouting videos, seeing his uh, overall skill package. He's not that skilled. <laughs> That's what a lot of people he have said. He is an absolute monster athletically and physically. Mm -hmm. There's video of him. He's he's best at stopping the run on the line, honestly. But I've seen him drop back in coverage and bat away balls, almost get interceptions. I've seen him... He dropped back in coverage, see a receiver catch like a five-yard hitch and then tackle him on the spot. He's fast. He's strong. He has everything you want in terms of the build and the athleticism. Mm -hmm. In terms of, like, pass rushing skill and, like, getting to the quarterback, he does not have much skill. He's very raw. He is something that a defensive coordinator and a head coach – an entire organization, honestly, they have to mold him into what they want him to be. I am, I am, I'm cautious with Trayvon Walker because I don't know what what he's going to be. That's the thing. It depends on the team. It depends on the coaching staff. It depends on the scheme. Mm -hmm. What do you want? 
because you're going to have to take some time to make him a pass rusher if you want to. Starting out, you know, he'll, be, he'll be really good in the run. He'll be really good in different packages. Mm-hmm. But he is a very raw player. That is just a monster athletically. So I'm afraid of that one, mm-hmm. honestly, especially at number one. Yeah. But I, like I said, you got, I yeah. think you got it's a chance. For, I think it you got to make a swing. swing. All right, you're up at number two. You got the you got the Lions. So listen, you honest you you made it kind of easy for me. <laughs> See, th- that's what I'm nervous I, about. Yeah, that's what I'm listen, now nervous about for tomorrow. With the number two pick, you, you we, we both agree Aiden Hutchinson is the safe pick. I'm not going safe. With the number two pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Kayvon Thibodeau. Thank you, edge rusher, out of Oregon. This guy. When you watch tape of him and Trayvon Walker, there is a major wide difference mm-hmm. in skill level. Yeah. Kayvon Thibodeau is a beast off the edge. And when he gets to the quarterback, he tries to make them pay. Mm-hmm. He has swims. He has he ha- he has everything. Everything you want in a pass rusher. Obviously, he has to get better. Yeah. He's just going to be a rookie. But he has the potential to be that all pro for years, future Hall of Famer type player yeah and the lions haven't had that guy honestly Mm -hmm. they've had barry sanders be a hall of famer greatest running back of all time they've had calvin johnson arguably top five wide receiver can they get that defensive player this time yeah that's a hall of famer i think Kayvon thibodeau could be that guy yeah there's a little bit of injury concern i think the red flags about him not being fully into football i think that's absurd yeah. Every football player has different interests and different passions. But for the most part they all football's the number one thing. Yeah. And I have no doubt with that in Kayvon Thibodeau. I think he's the best pass rusher on the Lions from the jump. And he could be one of the greats. Yeah. He has the total package in terms of speed, power, athleticism, and the moves. Going Kayvon Thibodeau to Detroit. All right. Malik, you can be the Lions GM now. I'll let you. I'll let you take over. Um, Listen, this this isn't like '04 when Matt Millen. They were gonna draft Demarcus Lawrence if people don't know. Mm-hmm. And at the last minute, Matt Millen was convinced to take Mike Williams, receiver from USC. Yeah, and we all know what happened in the future. Yeah, I love that pick. I, I like I said, if if it was up to me and I was Jacksonville, I would take Kayvon Thibodeau. But I think right now it doesn't look like they're going to. Um, so if the Lions were able to get past all those red flags or so to speak, I would love it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up taking Aiden Hutchinson if Walker goes. Uh, but yes, that would be the ideal pick for me personally. So now I got Houston and the Texans just need anything and everything. Listen, you you made a very questionable hire in Lovey Smith. Mm. You had a coach last year that the guys played hard for yeah. and believed in. Mm-hmm. But they, he wasn't a real hire. They just they just kicked him to the side. Yeah. And what's what's the direction for this franchise, Joey? So it's funny because Houston kind of now has to make amends for all the mistakes they've made. Yes. And they actually have to go with the safe pick. Aiden I Hutchins- agree. <laughs> Aiden Hutchinson's the guy. Yeah. Um, as much as I say like he's the safe pick, I think he's going to be productive. I don't think he can necessarily reach the heights of what possibly Trayvon Walker. If he goes to Houston, the hype for him being J.J. Part 2 will be yeah. too much. Yeah. So, yeah, P, if that happens, I, I hope people's expectations aren't crazy. Right. Now, he can be a very productive starter in this league. I think he's going to be fine. Um, just ceiling maybe a little bit lower. Um, but at the same at the same time, you want one of these three defensive ends. Yeah. So, whoever you get, I think you take. So, I, I think you just have to go with Aiden Hutchinson at this point. I'm surprised we have all three of them off the board already. Yeah. I doubt that's how it happens tomorrow. But No, I don't think so yeah. either. We got the big brains. We don't overthink things. Exactly. We're on top of this stuff. We're just attacking. All right, Malik, you got the Jets. This is a fun one. J-E-T-S, lose, lose, lose. <laughs> Last year, you buy into the big hype of Aaron Rodgers Jr. You take Zach Wilson. He struggles in the beginning, but he, he makes some strides. He plays better in the second half of the season. You got some young receivers. You got some young running backs. A stat I saw that surprised me, near the end of the football season last year, 
their uh their offensive line was almost ranked like top ten mm-hmm. near the end of the season. They gradually got better throughout the season. You got good young players on the defensive line. You got CJ Mosley coming back. Secondary. Okay. You got some questionable parts. You believe in Bryce Hall. He was the bright spot in the secondary, but outside of that, boy, you get you got questions. Mm-hmm. You drafted Ashton Davis. He got all the hype coming out at Cal as the safety. He's either been hurt or bad. No idea what you're doing with the other corner spot. And the other safety spot is decent. But you can use some something new. But I'm not going safety with this pick. Mm. To go across from Bryce Hall to maybe be the shutdown corner that the Jets haven't had since Revis Island, I'm going Ahmad Sauce Gardner. Nice. From the University of Cincinnati. I like it. I yeah. like that pick. Bringing in Sauce, his length, his athleticism, his speed, and his ability to just stay on a receiver. Mm-hmm. Robert Sala needs guys like that. He has yeah. a defensive mentality. I feel like you can be even more aggressive with this, bringing in Sauce Gardner and having Bryce Hall on the other side. Mm-hmm. You can do a lot of things on defense with these two guys. Yeah. And some people may think taking a corner this high is risky, but I think Sauce Gardner, Sauce Gardner is that good. Yeah. I assume you think he's that good too. Mm-hmm. So, New York Jets. Nice. Well, that kind of yeah, ruins my Sauce Giants. Gardner. Kind of ruins my Giants pick. This is where we get interesting. But I thought yes. that I, I thought that might happen. Um, unfortunately for for me at least, Giants are in the same boat as Houston to me. They are in an even bigger mess, which is uh, they are. Crazy. I think they have the most losses since like 2018. Yeah, just yeah, wild. Um, they they got a lot of holes to fill, and in this spot, when you know you get your choice of a con, a conwu. Wow. You know, anyway, <laughs> Evan Neal, Iki Iquanu. Iki yeah. uh, you get your choice of those linemen. I think, I mean, I, I don't think it really matters who you take. I, I think they're both super good. And I think the Giants at this point just have to take the best, best available. And I think Iquanu is just slightly better than Evan Neal. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to go there. Nothing super exciting again, but I just think that the Giants the Giants need anything and everything. They need O-line the most because that's been the big problem for a while now. Yeah. They need to protect whoever is going to be their quarterback, whether it be Daniel Jones or somebody else. Yeah. I, I, I like Iggy Kwanu. I, I, I did some scouting on him and Evan Neal. Icky is he's nastier. Yeah. He's he's gonna finish a play and really embarrass a defensive lineman. And when he gets his hands on you, it's it's pretty much over. Mm-hmm. You're you're going into the ground. Yeah. I like the pick, something the Giants need. But that makes it really easy for me at the sixth pick. Yeah. I'm going Evan Neal. Mm-hmm. I am afraid after what the Panthers GM said a few days ago in a press conference where he said he was comfortable with taking multiple quarterbacks mm-hmm. with the sixth pick. I don't want to throw any young quarterback into this situation. Yeah. We see what even it might be partly Sam Darnold, but we saw what happened as the season went on and things just things just didn't work for that offense. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey has been beat up too much. You can't keep a quarterback healthy or playing consistently. Mm-hmm. You've got good young receivers. You need to shore up that O line. Yeah. And I think Evan Neal is even more ready to start than Ike Aquanu. Mm-hmm. Icky could be even better, but I think Evan Neal, he's he started day one. Yeah. I think he's consistent, probably a pro bowler for several years. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Panthers take Evan Neal, not taking the big risk on a quarterback, just to whoever they draft, I don't have hope in because of the organization. Yeah. It's, I, it's not in a good place. I think that's a smart, I think that's a smart thing to do, uh, especially to, to me with a lot of people talking about quarterback at six here. Like, we saw flashes of Sam Darnold being good last year. MVP hype after, like, four weeks. Right. I feel like you ride that out one more year. I think you have time because, I mean, they're already talking about trading Christian McCaffrey as well. So, like, 
if you're already thinking about restarting from like this Christian McCaffrey little era, you might as well hold on to the whole system one more year and see where it goes, in my opinion. So now we're back to the Giants. Giants still struggling. They still need a lot of help anywhere and everywhere. Um, but I think you still have to start with their defense. There are some good wide receivers here. Um, but there's been talks about James Bradbury getting moved. Um, so I think just, I mean, whether you pair somebody with him on the other side to shore up uh, that secondary or a replacement, I think that's where you got to go. So I'm going cornerback. I'm going to go with Derek Stingley Jr. I'm mm. I'm a little questionable on him. I'm surprised you took him this high. Yeah. And I had him save for another pick. So, you know, I have to shuffle some things up now. So my thinking is just, like, again, you're in the boat where you need kind of best available corner. I don't know if, like, I don't know who's going to be around at their next pick. I can't even remember how far down their next pick is. I think it's the second round. I'm pretty sure they're still early in the second round. Um, yeah. But I think you want to assure that more top talent, even though there are some sneaky good corners, but there's also teams that are looking late in the first round for a couple corners. So I think you have to take the risk here and go with Derek Singley Jr. Again, we went safe on the first pick with the Giants. I think you can take more of a risk on the second pick here. Yeah, the talent is clearly there. As a freshman in the SEC, he was the best corner in the country. I think people forget that. He was a monster on that undefeated national championship team. Then injuries hit him, scheme changes, coaching changes, and things just weren't very good for the past two years. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know if he should be a starter from the jump. I think he needs some time to get back into what he was a few years ago. But if it works out, you have a Pro Bowl top level, all pro almost cornerback. So I don't hate it. Yeah. Now, this team right here, this team, the Atlanta Falcons, they haven't recovered from that <laughs> from that loss in the Super Bowl. No. They just haven't. And things are really dire right now. Mm -hmm. Matt Ryan has been traded to the Indianapolis Colts. You signed Marcus Mariota as a placeholder. You drafted Kyle Pitts last year, who had a really good rookie season. Bring back Cordero Patterson. Mm -hmm. They were both pole bowlers, I'm pretty sure, I think. But outside of that... <laughs> Yeah, you got some decent young talent on defense in the secondary. But th there's been so many injuries over the past few years, even with the young guys. The O-line has been up and down. After the Todd Gurley experiment failed, I thought that was going to work. It didn't work. Yeah. It's it's just not a good look for the Falcons right now. They There's a good chance they'll be the worst team in the league this year. Mm -hmm. So I think you need some excitement. Somebody that can help you put some more points on the board. In the midst of those losses, at least you can get close to putting up 30 maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Score over 20 in a bunch of games. Mm -hmm. And he can be one of the staples of this future with Calvin Ridley out from gambling. Yeah. With the eighth pick, I have the Atlanta Falcons taking Garrett Wilson from Ohio State. Mm -hmm. When you have Kyle Pitts and you have Cordero Patterson, who is he's more of a gadget player than a real like pure receiver. Yep. Having Calvin Ridley out really, really, really sucks. And Russell Gage leaving for Tampa Bay hurt, hurts even more. Yeah. That's a big dent in depth and overall huge talent in the receiving core. You still have uh, Olamide Zacchaeus, I think, who's a good slot receiver, has some speed. Yeah. He'll probably get a lot of snaps, but to put in that Calvin Ridley spot, maybe after this year, I don't know if they keep Calvin Ridley, but at least for this year, I think you can trust Garrett Wilson to – come in and bring some excitement so they'll give the fans something to watch mm -hmm. and something to look forward to for the future. A bit of a safety blanket. Kyle Pitts and Garrett Wilson can be some good safety blankets for Marcus Mariota. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm going Garrett Wilson. I think he helps them out a little bit right now, could help out more in the future. Hmm. First wide receiver off the board. Yeah. No, I like that pick. I think, I think that's a good one. All right. Seattle is one that I've been uh, I've been clueless on to be honest. Um it's a, it's ju it's looking just as bad almost for Seattle fans. They're in a weird spot and 
I think tomorrow they are hoping that somebody falls because they will, I would think, try to just snag that player, whoever falls. Um, there, I've seen some weird mocks that think they're going to go Malik Willis here. Part of me says maybe. I wouldn't be surprised. But I can't jump to that. Um, So I think what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to throw a wrench to myself a little bit. I am going to take a risk here. Are you going outside of the needs? Are you are you going needs, I mean, best available? Uh, Seattle kind of. Or just something you like. Like, is there Seattle? Do they, they need have, a ton. <laughs> yeah, like. They're kind of in a weird spot, too, yeah. now. Let me, let me look at what ESPN says their needs are. Line, defensive end, quarterback, cornerback, linebacker. So, yeah. I mean, it still falls in the same boat. Um, although. It seems like you're struggling with this one. I like this. Yeah. Okay, so here. I'll, I'll lay out my, my groundwork now because okay. we're going to get in. My thought is risk Jermaine Johnson. But now I started thinking safe. Charles Cross is right there. I He's think right I, there. I think I have to go with Charles Cross because they, yeah. like, the more I start thinking about it, they're bringing back Rashad Penny. If they're going to take this risk of staying with Drew Locke, they, they need to protect him. Yeah, I, I think it's it's easier than I made it. Charles Cross. Is I, I think that's more than safe. I think that is a fantastic pick. Yeah. To build, a, to start building a foundation for what could come in the future. It's still weird to me that they have still have Pete Carroll on, mm-hmm. and a lot of the people in the organization. Like I, I don't know if they're still trying to hang on to the past. If you're starting all the way over, I think you need to get a new fresh coach in, some new faces in the front office. But yeah, I love the Charles Cross pick. It's really good. I like it. Seattle fans should be happy if that's the pick. Yes. Now. Chris is going to be very happy with the way this is falling for the New York Jets. Because mm-hmm. you get Sauce Gardner at four, a potential future great at corner. Yeah. And at 10, I've seen some mocks where this guy is at four for the Jets. And it's possible he could fall to 10 or he could go that high, but in this scenario, he's fallen. Mm-hmm. And the New York Jets have gotten Drake London out of USC. Okay. Zach Wilson needs more reliable, more trustworthy options on offense so he doesn't just have to try and air it out and make highlight plays all the time. Drake London isn't the fastest. Mm -hmm. He's more quick than fast. He's a really good route runner, could improve. I'm not sure if he'll quite be like Mike Evans, who's just overall like an athletic beast at 6'5". Drake London is an athletic beast too, though. Yeah. He went to USC on a basketball and football scholarship. He played basketball his freshman year and then decided to stick with football. Yeah. And through, I think it was seven games last year, 88 catches over 1,000 yards and like eight touchdowns. Yeah. He was dominating the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. The way he uses his body, his catch radius, and his overall athletic ability just made it almost impossible for him to guard on the college level. Yeah, And if he can improve all those areas, plus get better as a route runner, improve on the quickness, learn all the nuances of the game, and most importantly, make that connection with Zach Wilson. Mm -hmm. He could be his number one go-to guy for years to come. Zach, I mean, Drake London could be a guy that gets 10 plus catches a season for a while. He could could become one of those guys in the NFL. That's just a red zone monster a big play threat once he figures out using his quickness even more on deep routes Mm -hmm. and a guy that keeps the chains moving. I think that's what he'll be from the start. A guy that just keeps the chains moving, gets the catches up, maybe not tons of yards or tons of touchdowns, but he should have a ton of catches in his first season. And I like him with Zach Wilson in New York. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Um, I get the commanders. Another kind of weird team I don't even know what to do with. With Dan Snyder as your owner, it's always tough. It is always a pickle. Yeah. And you got wins. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, 
And then I'm like looking at, I'm trying to do like a mock draft simulator so I can see this a little <laughs> bit better. Um, and I'm looking at ESPN's rankings and man, rankings are all over the place. When for, on this, I would be stuck on this pick too. Because, um, yeah. So what I'm thinking. Actually, I think I know who I take here. The more like, I keep getting into this boat of like, I feel like these teams need to just pick the best available. And I know that if I don't pick this player, the Vikings would love to have him. So, for Washington, I'm just going to go best available in my mind. This was a guy that was talked about top five at one point. He fell out a little bit because of his, you know, his combine. Do I know who this is? Who are you taking? I'm taking Kyle Hamilton. Thank you. Uh, I think, Thank you. again, Washington, they probably need too many things where you just go best available, you try to get the best player, and make it work. They're a defensive team, so I think it fills, uh, fits that mold that they've kind of slowly built. Their defense kind of looked really hype at the beginning of the season. Didn't do all that well during the season, but there's still hope there. And I think you just take Kyle Hamilton and move on with your life. I think that'd be a great pick. Really, really good pick. I like that. Oh, you you got me stuck mm-hmm. at twelve because this is where I was going to take Derek Stingley. Okay. I think him being mentored by Patrick Peterson in his last few years, getting time to wait his turn, being with those few those LSU guys, I think he would have been awesome in Minnesota. Yeah. But. He's going to New York, so mm-hmm. they have needs. I would almost like trade back at this point if I was the Vikings. Yeah, because I'm not taking a tight end this high. Do not I do not believe in enough of Trent McDuffie to take here this early. This is this is high. Mm-hmm. This is high. I don't know if I'd trust any defensive linemen to go this high. Maybe maybe Jermaine Johnson. I like Trent McDuffie. Man, oh man, oh man, what do I do? <laughs> I don't know. This is your call. What do I do? I was stuck on corner. Take a swing. Oh, I am going at the number 12 pick. I'm taking a swing, and I'm going Jermaine Johnson. He has all everything it takes to be a really good pass rusher in the league. They do need help revitalizing that D-line that was dominant for a few years, but they've let go of some guys. Mm-hmm. They've kept some guys. Get some youth in there. I'll go Jermaine Johnson from Florida State. Nice. Yeah. All right, back to Houston. Funny thing is, on this mock draft simulator that I'm looking at, it says Houston Texans needs every position. <laughs> That's a classic. Um, So let's see. We went safe with Aiden Hutchinson in the last pick. Do you go safe again? Could I get... <laughs> Just to stay on the fans' good side. Do I stay safe or do I get real spicy? Because there's one real spicy pick that I can... Listen. Things have gotten too spicy in Houston lately. How spicy do you want to get? Ah, man. <laughs> I mean, take a swing if you got to. All right. If you feel this is what's best. I think at this point in the draft, I don't think I want to, like, I don't really want to go with, like, a Trevor Penning out of northern Iowa. Uh, I don't think wide receiver is – top of line for Houston, which is unfortunate because there's a lot of good receivers here. I think I'm just I'm just going to take the leap. I'm going to go Jordan Davis. Wow. Yeah. Aiden Hutchinson and Jordan Davis. Yeah. Just 13? To, that's, yeah. Just trying to bolster that interior. You know, Jordan Davis has been all over the map. Uh, I don't know where he's actually going to be drafted. Um, but again... Houston was gifted with Aiden Hutchinson dropping to three. 
I think you take the swing and you go for something at this point. I honestly, I won't be surprised if the Texans do something like that tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Just because they're the Texans and there's going to be some swings yeah. and some misses. 14. The Ravens, don't do me wrong. This Aaron. is where I'm taking a small swing. Okay. You kind of messed me up. Well, you didn't, you didn't really mess me up. I expected Trent McDuffie to be there later, mm-hmm. but I'm not going Trent McDuffie. Hmm. They, they do need some corner help, but I'm going someone – I'm going with someone that can give you some corner help and can be a high-level safety. I'm going Dax Hill. Daxon Hill from the University of Michigan. Wow. Yeah. I think he goes top 20. Wow. And I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. I, I, I stuck on him when I got to the Ravens because he can, he can be great in the nickel spot. If you need him to play outside, he can do it sometimes. And he can go back. He has so much, mm-hmm. um, what's, what's the word? Flexibility. He's so flexible in the secondary. You can put him in different spots and different packages. You can blitz him. He's a great tackler coming up mm-hmm. in the run game. He can do a little bit of everything for you. I don't know if he's specifically going to be elite in, a, in one thing. Yeah. But I think he's going to be really good in almost everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can, I mean. Yeah. You can move him all over the place. You can shadow him. You can disguise him. I think Dax Hill is a weapon. That The Ravens will know exactly what to do with him once they get a hold of him. That's yeah. the big thing. They're an organization that you trust with players like this. And I think the Ravens will do really good things with Dax Hill. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Safety that can also play nickel and all over the place. Yeah. So I don't hate it. Um, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. Okay, now I have Philly, which, you know, I, I enjoy Philly. I like Jalen Hurts. Don't know if he's going to stay all that long, but uh, they have a lot of needs. And once again, they're in the need for wide receiver. Yes. Um, There are some better players that I think that they could take right at this moment for their team to help more of their defense. I think I'd you're taking the person I'd, I would take right here. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. <laughs> if you're going to receiver. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> I got reasons. Listen, like, uh, so, so, you know, New Orleans is also looking receiver. Yes. So it's almost like you take one, New Orleans takes the other. I like yes, yesterday, I, <laughs> when I thought through this, these next two picks, this is how I figured they would go. But mm-hmm. let's see who you choose. So this is why I feel like I'm going off the cuff a little bit because – I feel like Philly has messed up on so many wide receivers in the last few years. I'm going with Chris Olave. Wow. I think Wow. He, I think he's the safer pick in this wow. scenario. To get a slot guy to join up with Devontae Smith. Smith will be in his second year. Hopefully he'll make that jump. Olave can give you somebody that Hurts can kind of dump it down to, get some safe throws, get into a rhythm. And he, when he catches a short, he can take it like 34 right. yards. I'm just slightly afraid. Now, Jamison Williams looks like he's going to be back on track, going to be healthy. But there is that little bit of nerves in me that, okay, Philly goes for the high-flying Jamison Williams again, kind of like we've seen with like – now that Jalen Rager is – in the same boat, but to take a swing on somebody and then it fail. And I was like, here's the, they've, they've overthought this before. Right. The guy was sitting right there and they chose somebody else. That's true. They've done this a few times. They passed up on DK Metcalf too. Yeah. But I feel like these, these two are both in a different boat. Um, than the guys that they've actually chosen. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I feel like Olave is just a slightly safer pick for me, and I feel like Philly needs to – they need to rope it in a little bit and just go with what can work. And I think Olave pair – like I said, I think he pairs a little bit better with the way that they played with Jalen Williams, Miles Sanders. They can play that short dump uh, type of play style and then maybe go for some, some shots deep. That's just my thinking. I do think Jamison Williams is the better player, but – 
being Philly, I think they have to go Olave. Wow. That that really surprised me. I figured it would. I figured that it would. That surprised me. He is older. He did he is a better route runner overall. He could step in and be that number two guy or number three guy from the jump. It's possible. So I don't hate it. Mm-hmm. But with the 16th pick, the New Orleans Saints select Jamison Williams. Yeah. Now, Jamison Winston and Jamison Williams together with a possibly healthy, healthy Michael Thomas back. Mm-hmm. That sounds dangerous, doesn't it? It could be. And Al- Alvin Kamara healthy too. Mm-hmm. And they've they've said Taysom Hill is probably going to be more of a tight end gadget player. He's not yeah. going to be the quarterback. Mm-hmm. You had Jamison Williams, you have the weapons. And if Jameis Winston can keep improving, go off of the year he was having last year before he got hurt, keep the interceptions down, but still take those deep shots to Jamison Williams. Mm -hmm. This could be a surprising offense. If, big if, everybody's healthy. Yeah. It's a big if. But on paper, it it sounds great, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Sounds really good. It does. So, Jamison Williams to New Orleans. I think he fits in. All right. Yeah. Okay, now I have the Chargers. Chargers are disappointed also that nobody fell. I think the Chargers, if anybody were to fall, like Jermaine Johnson or Jordan Davis in the real draft, which is very possible, I think could be really scary on this Chargers team. Um, at this point, though, I think you have to kind of go the safer, maybe not safe, but um, the more standardized pick. I'm going to go with Trent McDuffie. They need some cornerback help. Um, just kind of what this team needs. Their defense is pretty stacked otherwise. Um, they've just had some injuries in their secondary the last few years. I think McDuffie just kind of slots in pretty nicely there. Man, you just made it tough on me. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you Philly. made it really tough on me, Joey. Oh, boy, back to Philly. Yep. Now we get to reverse the roles. Listen, this is this is where we start getting to swing time. <laughs> yeah. This is this is where you start taking risks. Mm-hmm. Because I would have taken Trent McDuffie. Yep. I would have taken Jordan Davis. Yep. They're both off the board. Mm-hmm. You got the receiver, too. They could get some young D-line. I don't know if I'm high enough on any of the oh, any of the DBs <laughs> later on to, to to take a risk on them. Man, man oh man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> How crazy would it be if I doubled down on a receiver? And that would be exactly How what crazy Philly would that be? fans would be mad about. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> I'm not gonna double down on receiver. Uh, that that'd be too. I feel much. like that's too crazy. That'd be too. That'd be too much. I'm gonna go D line. And let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Fletcher Cox is hitting free agency next year. You could get some D tackle help. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm just. I'm gonna go Devontae Wyatt. Okay. Yeah. Devontae Wyatt, prob- probably outside of like Channing Tindall and one of one other def- defender that's not extremely talked about. Mm-hmm. People didn't talk a ton about Devontae Wyatt, but he's just as much of a freak and just as talented yeah. as everybody else is. But he was the outside of, he was next to Jordan Davis. Yep. Doing his job, containing the run. Yeah. Go Devontae Wyatt. Just shore up the D-line. Keep some strength down there. Okay. Um. All right. I am with the Saints. Um. Hmm. I think the Saints want to go offensive line here. Uh, I'm not super good at knowing the linemen. Um, I've seen... That's why I had to do some extra research. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've seen Trevor Penning uh, up there. He's on ESPN. Uh, Raymond Tim. of Central Michigan. Yeah, that's Kenyon Green. So a few I, guys. I think for me, 
I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the uh, the local guy, Bernard Raymond. I think uh, Central Michigan has shown in the past that they can produce good linemen, um, and that's a need for the Saints. Uh, that's that's basically all I got. I think they kind of got to go a, a boring pick here, um, so I'm going to go with Raymond out of Central Michigan. Okay, so here you go, Malik. You got your Pittsburgh oh, Steelers. Man. Pittsburgh Steelers. The fighting Mitch Trubisky is coming into the season. Or not. Ben is gone. We're, we're starting. Mm-hmm. We're starting the new process. Ben is gone. You bring in Trubisky as the placeholder. I don't hate it. I, I, I can't take what the Bills organization has said about him being a great backup and just assume he's going to be a really good starter. But mm-hmm. he can move, and he still has throwing talent. We'll see how much he's improved. Najee Harris is back. They made some signings in the offseason to help the atrocious O-line that they had. Mm-hmm. You got Deontay Johnson back. You lose Juju Smith-Schuster. You could take a swing on a quarterback. You could. This is when you could go Malik Willis. Mm-hmm. This is when you could. That's not what I'm doing. Hmm. It's not what I'm doing. With Juju Smith-Schuster gone, I think you have two receivers that you'd believe in, Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool. You need that third guy. And who's it going to be? The guy that I'm choosing is going to be Traylon Burks out of Arkansas. Okay. Ahead of George Pickens, I'm going. Tra- I'm going Traylon Parks. I think uh, that's kind of where he's at right now. Yeah, I, I think apparently he showed up to the combine overweight. I don't know what that was about. I, I'm not going to take major account into it. His word is from Arkansas, and everybody that knows him is that he's a hard worker. Six two two twenty five. He has a big, almost like massive running back build, but he has the receiver skills. He has to get better as a route runner. Yeah. But when he gets, all you have to do is get the ball in his hands. I'm not going to make a Debo Samuel comp. (laughs) Everybody's trying to get the next Debo Samuel. I'm not doing that. Yeah. But the truth is, all you need to do is get the ball in this dude's hands. Mm -hmm. He's hard to bring down once he gets the ball. Secondary players, safeties and corners trying to tackle him. He's either stiff arming him or just running through him. It's hard to bring him down. He has really good game speed. You watch the Alabama game, his highlights versus Alabama. He outruns the Alabama secondary multiple times. And he has the ability to go up and get it. If you run out of time and just throw it up and it's one-on-one with him in a corner Mm -hmm. or him in a safety, he's big enough and talented enough to go up and get the ball. There's a ton of creative stuff you can do with him. Sweeps. You can have him do more like short routes, and he can break those off. He can be a deep ball guy. I like Traylon Burks going to the Steelers. Okay. I have New England now. They are in a similar boat as some others. They're, they need kind of quite a bit. Mac Jones needs some help. Uh, could use a wide receiver. I like Jahan Dotson. I like George Pickens. But I don't know if necessarily I would want to take them at 21. Um, so I'm going to overlook wide receiver. They did just make the trade for Devontae Parker. So maybe that helps them a little bit. So, once again, I'm kind of looking at best available. And in my mind, best available right now in this draft, Devin Lloyd, linebacker. You right read my mind. <laughs> yeah. That's what I expected it to be. I kept feeling like he kept kind of – he could go earlier in this draft. Um, yeah. So, I think New England would be super happy to get him here at 21. I love that pick. He He's a guy Belichick really mm-hmm. would take and make a star. Yeah. Green Bay Packers here at 22. There's no there's there's no time to play. <laughs> there's no joking. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. There's there's no time to mess around and tease your fans and be just ridiculous. But what if they trade for Debo Samuel? <laughs> I mean, that helps. Mm-hmm. But with this 22nd pick while it's here, you got to go. You don't have to go. But I think you go George Pickens from Georgia. Okay. You're, you're all pro guy. Arguably top receiver in the league is out. 
You got Alan Lazard. You lose Mark, uh, Valdez Scantling. Mm-hmm. You got Randall Cobb on his last legs and Amari Rogers. You need a guy with that ceiling, that athletic ceiling, that explosive ceiling. He has been, he's had those injuries. Mm-hmm. But the flashes, I think, are worth this pick. He came back during the last part of the season. He showed he was willing to block. He made a few big plays when he was needed. So, yeah, I'm going George Pickens at 22 to the Packers. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I have Arizona. I have no idea what to do with Arizona. <laughs> they're another team that needs offensive line health. They're, they're just worried about Kyler throwing hissy fits right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't know what they're going to do with him. Yeah. Uh, this one here, they need um, interior help on their offensive line. So I'm thinking I'm just going to go with what I'm seeing best available in this scenario. Uh, Tyler Linderbaum out of Iowa, the center. Um, I think just, again, interior line help. Really good right center. from the middle. So you might as well work from the inside out. And hopefully he can get Kyler the ball because otherwise Kyler will throw more hissy fits. I agree. So Ooh. the the team America's team. The team none of us likes. The Dallas Cowgirls. You lose <laughs> you lose Amari Cooper in the offseason. You trade him, yeah. actually. Uh you lose Randy Gregory after messing with his contract. Mm-hmm. He goes to Denver. And you also need some O-line help still because your O-line is getting old and Lyle Collins is gone. Mm -hmm. So you could go receiver. You could go O-line. This is where Jerry Jones would take a swing on Christian Watson right here. I I could see it happening. (laughs) Even though they have – wow. What, Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb? CD Lamb, yeah. But but you lost Amari Cooper, that's the thing. True. And you lost uh the kid that wore number one that went to Miami. Cedric Wilson. Yeah, you lost him too, so yeah. you need some replacement at some point. But I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give Dak Prescott some more help on the O line. And uh I'm trying to remember all the ones that went. Evan Neal's gone, Charles Cross is gone, Linder Bomb just went. Aquanu was gone. You you went Bernard Raymond. Did you you choose Kenyon Green? No. You didn't choose Kenyon Green. No. There's guys like Trevor yeah. Penning out there. Trevor Penning is there too. Zion Johnson. I'm gonna go with the athletic upside of Kenyon Green. I I think he's really strong and he moves very well. I I'm not gonna say he could be as good as Lyle Collins. Mm-hmm. or any of the all-pro guys they've had. But he has the upside and the talent to do it. I wouldn't – I almost want to take it back, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to stick with Kenyon Green on this pick. Okay. Yeah, Kenyon Green out of Texas A&M. All righty. I get the Buffalo Bills. I think this is an exciting one. Buffalo Bills, I feel like, have done really good in their drafts the last couple of years. And, I mean, it – Shows that they need a wide receiver. I don't know if I fully agree with that. I think they always find ways to get new receivers. So I'm going to go with kind of what a lot of people are thinking might happen or might not happen. Um, But I think you just attack the immediate need, and I think you take Brees Hall. Um, He might – like running backs might not go till way later, but I think – Buffalo, they need to keep taking swings on running backs you mean until Tennessee? Huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Buffalo. I, I, yeah, Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. I think they need to take uh keep taking running backs until they get one that sticks. Devin Singletary has just been super inconsistent. He looks really good for stretches and then he looks really bad for stretches. I think he's a better pairing with Devin Singletary, Brees Hall is, than like a Zach Moss. I think they kind of do the same thing where you can rotate them out. But Brees Hall has more potential to just take over that backfield in general. Brees Hall and Derrick Henry. 
I keep thinking of the Titans. What yeah, am I doing? You have the Titans now. Yeah, because I have the Titans, I keep. <laughs> now you're on the, the clock with the Titans. Oh my God! <laughs> nice pick for the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> nice pick for the Bills. What do the Titans do now? Nice. Okay, so you lose Julio Jones after a disappointing stretch from him. You bring in Robert Woods. Mm-hmm. He's had a ton of injuries too. We'll see if he still has a lot left. You hope AJ Brown gets back to what he was two years ago. He had a Kind of dip last season. You hope that he doesn't leave. <clears throat> yes. This says they need like have a need for a second string running back, but honestly, I think I still I think you're still fine with King Henry. Mm-hmm. So agree. I'm gonna go O line. Taylor Lewan has had injuries. There have been inconsistencies and in kind of a drop in play over the past year. Mm-hmm. I'm going Trevor Penning at this pick. Okay. I think he fits the the mold of what they want out of linemen in Tennessee, what Mike Vrabel wants out of an offensive lineman, mm-hmm. a guy that's going to be relentless and just puts dudes deep into the grass or the turf, whatever they have. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going Trevor Penny mm-hmm. to Tennessee. All right. I have Tampa Bay team that brought back Tom Brady. Uh, so they're going to go for another Super Bowl run. I will be honest. I really want to be spicy and take Malik Willis here. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Um, but we but, ha- yeah, we know that they're going for a championship. They're not looking for the future. So Ali Marfit just retired. I think they need yeah. They just need offensive line help. I think I'm just gonna go with Zion Johnson. I, I think they just they figure out ways to slot guys into their offensive yeah. line. Tristan Wirfs was a like seamless fit. Yeah. So I think Zion Johnson should be fine. He'll slot in nicely for them. You're back to Green Bay. We might need to go receiver again because. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, look at look at the receiver death chart. You got George Pickens now. Great. Mm-hmm. I like Alan Zard. Randall Cobb is almost out. You still don't know if Amari Rodgers is going to be what you think he can. I still think he can be really good. He still has the talent, but it's a complete unknown. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the Packers will do it. Most of the top off- offensive linemen are out. You have Rashawn Gary. You still have pieces on that defense. Mm-hmm. I'm going receiver again. Oh, boy. And because you don't know what you have in Amari Rodgers – you don't know if, if you want to make him a slot receiver. You don't know if you want to play, play on the outside more like you did at Clemson. You don't know. So you're taking a swing. I'm taking a swing, but it's not a huge swing. Okay. Because this is a guy that could go around this area. I'm going Jahan Dotson from Penn State. Okay. If you get to near the end of the first round and you're a Packers fan and you have George Pickens and Jahan Dotson, how can you be upset? I thought you were about to swing for Christian Watson. Oh, no, no, no. I was, I wasn't taking that big of a swing. Okay. I was going with more of a maybe maybe more of a short thing. Okay. Yeah. He's a he's fast. He's reliable in the slot. He can play on the outside too. He's not very big, but he's he's tough. Mm-hmm. He can go over the middle and make catches. Yeah, George Pickens and Jahan Dotson to Green Bay. All right. Now we got back to back Kansas City picks. Yes. More wide receiver need. <laughs> But they're the what, team, what are you doing first? They are the team that has Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. What is Patrick Mahomes like to just throw it, sling it? I'm loving that Green Bay skipped out on Christian Watson because Kansas City <laughs> eats that kind of man alive. Yes. And they love to see that. Christian Watson, I think, would be an outstanding pick for Kansas City because he's a little more raw, but in Kansas City, they'll be able to – mold you very quickly i think that's a great pick for kansas city now you have the second kansas city pick do you go back to back wide receivers because i thought about it i'm not going back to back receivers this is taking a bit of a risk a bit of a risk Mm -hmm. he could be more like early second mid second but i believe in this dude's talent i believe in his motor and i believe he would fit into kansas city and just be a greedy defensive player that helps them replenish their D-line, get some more fight, some more nastiness over there, and make some more plays. Mm-hmm. I'm going George Karloftis from Purdue. 
Yeah, I think that's a good pick for them, too. I think Kansas yeah. City fans would be so happy to get Christian Watson and George Karloftis. Yeah. One guy that's kind of made his way up the board. Karloftis has kind of fell fell back a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I think those would be super good yeah. picks for those guys. The dynasty continues in, in Kansas City. Yeah. Okay, now I have the Super Bowl runner-up Cincinnati Bengals. Apparently, they just need line help. Um, again, I keep getting these linemen, and I'm not super <laughs> yeah. familiar with them all now that we've gotten to this point. It's not a strong D-tackle class. The DNs, they get questionable after like three or four of them. Yeah, and they also need more of an interior guy. Yeah, um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of that. So... Let's see. Hmm. Yeah. Cincinnati, you're in trouble. Yeah. They they've done they're not in trouble, but No, they just Yeah. They've they, done so well. They've done an themselves. excellent job signing O linemen. Yeah. They have the receivers, they have the running back, they have the quarterback. Man, I would be so Listen, you 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 might need to take a stretch on a corner because Eli was, Apple, you know. I was about to say that you know, that yeah. was my next idea because yeah. I was about to say, also, I'd be so mad if they decided to take, like, N'Kobe Dean or something if he fell again this far. Um, no spoilers, but. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'll just take the best corner, and I'll take. Ooh, who do I want, though? Might be greedy and go for <laughs> what I want to fall to the Lions. Um, I'm just going to go with ESPN's best available. I'm going to go with Andrew Booth Jr., uh, cornerback out of Clemson. Okay. I think, yeah. Eli Apple, that was that was what I started thinking about as you were talking, so great minds think alike. So Andrew Booth, Cincinnati kind of in the boat where they can kind of go best available if they want to. All right, final pick of the first round in our mock draft goes to the Lions. So but before we before we in this first round, I want to say they're gonna be there's gonna be at least one run quarterback in the first round. Yeah. There's going to be. That's why I was gonna take Malik Willis with Tampa yeah. Bay. There's going to be swings on a, at least one or two quarterbacks. Because also Malik Willis behind Tom yeah. Brady would be good potential. We have the top eight receivers going in the first round. I don't know if there will be eight. That I'm might, assuming at least five. Could that I think could might happen. It's possible. But, yeah. But with the 32nd pick for the Detroit Lions, this is where I want to take receiver. Mm -hmm. You just signed – what's his name from Jacksonville? DJ Chark. DJ Chark. You just signed DJ Chark from Jacksonville. He's coming off injury. He has a, a bunch of talent. He's had some good seasons, but he's got to prove what he can do. Amonor St. Brown had a really good rookie season. He's looking to improve off of that. You have a Pro Bowl tight end. You have other good options at receiver, but you still need a little bit more punch for some more explosive plays, some good uh, play actions with DeAndre Swift. I don't think I'd be willing to take Justin Ross this high. I don't think I would. I love David Bell, but I'm not taking him this high. Sky Moore doesn't fit the scheme. I don't think. But maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know if he slots in next to St. Brown, but maybe. Maybe. This is your your choice. Listen, this is this is oh. I might have to take a big swing here. I just might have to. You know what? He's not going this high. <laughs> He's not going this high. And I, I was going to take Sky Moore until you said what you said. Because I'm on Ross St. Brown. This is basically yes. in the spot he's in. Although Sky Moore could like still take. St. Brown yeah. could be more of a middle route guy. <sighs> do, I, do I take this dude here? Oh, man. Don't make me revoke your GM capabilities, Malik. This would. We also just remember, we also have the 34th pick. We do. <laughs> we do. So the Lions can take the best available here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Sky Moore. I'm going Sky Moore. We've revoked your GM capabilities. I don't think he's being drafted to. <laughs> To take the spot of Amon Ross St. Brown. 
He also plays outside. That's the thing. He's not just a tiny slob. He's almost 200 pounds. He's 5'10". He has a big build to him. He's fast. He's a really good route runner. He doesn't just have to be stuck in the slot. He can also be outside. So we're just ignoring N'Kobe Dean and Lewis Seen. Yes. I have fallen off on, on N'Kobe Dean. <sighs> I have not. And I also I don't think Lewis Seen is I, – I, I wouldn't take him this high. So my thought here is at 32, you take the best available um, defensively. Because I don't think that 33, I don't think Jacksonville is going to take Sky Moore. I think you could get him at 34. I mean, you could take N'Kobe Dean, but I, I'm not as high as on, on as high on him as I was even a week ago. Even if it's not N'Kobe Dean, I think you take your best available defensive player at 32. I mean, they could take Channing Tindall, also a Georgia linebacker. Just because could, yeah. I think it's more likely that Jacksonville, Jacksonville steals the defensive player that you want instead of the wide receiver that you may want. Yeah. And like you said, they have 34 also. Mm-hmm. So you could still get a receiver. Now, ideally, it would hopefully it would be like Dotson or Watson would go for the Lions. Like, they could go that far down. But we don't know. You know who I was thinking about taking who? before I went back to Sky Moore? John, John Mechie from Alabama. Uh it is because that he, one's tough. he is he might be the best black blocker of all receivers. Mm-hmm. And he's not the fastest, but he's a really good route runner and he has great hands. Yeah. He's a really good possession receiver. Mm-hmm. So I I could go with that or Sky Moore. Yeah, they have thirty two and thirty four. All right. That's our first round uh mock draft. Um we will probably get like four picks correct i wouldn't be surprised yeah um it's gonna be a crazy draft and that is happening tomorrow like i said we went a little bit overboard today but that's fine because you know we couldn't make up our minds about linemen we didn't do our research for for that um but yeah we will next week we'll kind of recap the actual draft and uh we'll get some nba playoff updates we'll most likely be in the second round i think we are Guaranteed to be in the second round, actually. Um, and, yeah, we'll go from there. Hopefully, we're going to be super excited about what the Lions did on draft day. But for now, we'll see you guys next time. This has been Beach from the Sidelines. I feel sorry for any of the quarterbacks that get drafted in the first round. It's, I just don't. It might not be good. And what are you getting me for my birthday, Joey, huh? What's my gift? Happy birthday. You know what? I, I'll, I'll take it. I gave you the Lions picks. Ah, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>